We're back with five guys in a Bible, and tonight we're talking about the issue of sin. And in particular, are all sins created equal? Is there a, some kind of hierarchy or not? So we're going to start off the question with Todd Bryan. Yes and no. Did you want more than that? Did they want an explanation? I guess that's confusing there. Um, let me explain what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're just talking about guilt, one sin is a sin. I mean, one sin is, is too much. James 2, for whoever shall keep yet stumble in one point, he's guilty of all. So if you want to look at it from that point of view, if you're a liar and you don't have forgiveness through Jesus Christ, you're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. If you're a murderer and you don't have forgiveness through the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. So as far as guilt is concerned, a sin is a sin. Now, I think where people get confused, and I, I almost think sometimes it's willingly, because I think the the is to make one sin equal with another sin. So, well, I'm already a liar anyway, and I'm a sinner anyway. So, you know, I might as well be a drug addict. Or, or whatever. I mean, they're all the same. You're a sinner. You're, you're a liar, so I can do whatever. Um, most of the time, that's how I've almost heard looked at. It's rarely a theological discussion. It's almost a, a license to be able to sin a little bit more, quote unquote. But is that proper? It, it, feeling as a greater sin. Well, number one, a child of God shouldn't be looking at a way to sin. He should be striving as much as he can not to, because we're supposed to be being Christ-like. So if we're using it as a license to sin, that's terrible, and that needs to be done away with. But let's look at it from a theological perspective real quick. Sins are, some sins are worse than others. I, I, I think there are tons of scripture to support that. Perhaps the clearest, just read through the law. You will see that God placed different punishments for different sins. I mean, there was a different punishment for theft and murder. There was, there are, there were different punishments for various things. Um, when Jesus was delivered to Pilate and Pilate saying, Hey, I've got power to crucify you. Or, are you going to say anything? And he said, you know, you wouldn't have any power at all unless it was given to you from above. But he went on to say something about Judas Iscariot. He said, therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater Sin, and that Greek word there is megos. J uh, Jason can actually pronounce it properly when it gets to him, but I think it's megos, and it means bigger. I mean, uh, stronger. You know, uh, more powerful. It, it was a, it was a, it was a greater sin. Now, if Jesus said that Judas had a greater sin than Pilate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to side with Jesus on this. That he was talking about, and some sins worse than other sins. So, um, if you're talking about guilt, they're all the same. But I, I generally don't think that's what the questioner was talking about. Um, you know, murder is worse than hating somebody as far as guilt, as far as the greatness of the sin is concerned. But both are wrong and may, will make you guilty before God and are a violation of, of the law. So, that's all I got. All right, we're going to move up to Mark Campbell. All right, so um, I will say this. Are all sins the same? Yes, because essentially at the core, at the root of every sin is rebellion against God, against God's commandment, against God's authority. And so every sin, no matter what the sin is, it is rebellion against God. So is every sin the same? Yes, because it's rebellion against God at its core. Um, but is sin different? Um, and the answer to that, of course, is yes. Uh, one of the things that makes it difficult for us is we look at sin from man's perspective, and we will put degrees on sin in our own minds um, from the, for the fact that to us, you know, I, I remember when I was a little boy, okay, I remember that my mom and dad, we were in a car, we were driving down the two-lane road, and and um, my mom and dad were whispering. And 
and uh, I didn't know what they were whispering about, and they was just like, you know, I was just a little boy. And they were like, you know, you're too young. We'll let you know later on. Uh, in other words, someone had committed a terrible sin. You know what that terrible sin was? Uh, someone was getting divorced. Whenever I was a boy, that was not, I mean, that was hush-hush. You know, no one knew anything about it. So from man's perspective, at that point, divorce was horrible. Now today, what's the perspective on that? It's accepted by most people as, you know, that's just a fact of the way of life. So from man's perspective, we'll put different degrees on sin, and we'll expect different punishments. You know, sometimes even, okay, if you committed sin against someone else, well, it does. that's not too bad, but now if you commit that sin against me, now that deserves a severe punishment. So if that sin affects us, sometimes we'll have a different opinion of it. And, and so from man's perspective, we'll see sin from a different point of view, and, and we'll think it has different degrees and all those kind of things. But from God's perspective, sin is sin in that it is all rebellion against him. Is there greater judgments upon those sin? Absolutely there are, just like Brother Todd said. So is it is a sin as a sin as a sin? Yes, because it's rebellion against God. But is there a difference in sin? Absolutely there is, and we understand. Um, murder is worse than uh, thinking evil thoughts about someone in your mind. Um, actually committing adultery is, from a man's perspective, is worse than thinking lustful thoughts. But from God's perspective, it's still rebellion against sin. So I guess my answer is sort of like Todd's also, yes and no. Um, and I'll quit there. All right. That moves it over to me. And, uh, you know, you're, you're all, this is an easier answer than, uh, than it takes five guys to do because uh, I think we're all pretty much going to be in agreement on this. Uh, the scripture is pretty conclusive. You know, there are some sins that are in greater degree as far as the punishment goes, but all sins make us guilty before God. All make us worthy of death, make us worthy of condemnation. Now, you know, some some could debate the question of, of this is, is, are some sins, you know, when we know what is sin and we do it, is there a greater punishment for that as, or, or guilt in that as opposed to someone who doesn't know? that it's sin and does it. And I think that that's actually bore out in Scripture, too, um, that, uh, you know, and that's not an excuse for everyone to be in ignorance, <laughs> you know, the ignorance is bliss type of argument, but, but it is true nonetheless. When we know what is sin and we go about and we do our will instead of God's will, uh, we can't expect any kind of blessing in that, and really there's going to be condemnation to follow. So with, with that, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Jason Schultz. All right. Well, I'm 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 with you fellas. <laughs> You're right. It's the the answers the answer is yes and no. Okay, and there's no there's no easier answer than that. I, I'd I'd really like to be able to say it's one or the other, but it's yes and no because yes, it all sins the same in the sense that it makes us guilty in the eyes of God. You know, it's taught it's that if you if you break one law, you're a lawbreaker. I mean, that's what James says. There's one law. There might be a lot of different commandments, okay, and there might be a lot of different ways to break the law. But if you break the law, it doesn't matter which commandment. You're a lawbreaker, and you violated God's standard. And so, you know, death, death, and hell is the the condemnation for that. But Jesus was also pretty clear. Um, that when it comes to like the severity of punishment or the, the greater condemnation, um, it was never, it's never really the greater condemnation for the things that you would expect when, when it's listed in the scripture. Um, for example, in Matthew 23, verses 14, um, <clears throat> Jesus says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater condemnation or the greater damnation. Now, Jesus didn't say it's because of murder or um, anything like that. Essentially, what he said was, 
you know, you've taken advantage of widows and you prayed for a long time so people could hear you. So you're going to receive the greater damnation. Um, <laughs> so in Jesus's eyes, the question is, well, what, what would be the greater sin as God sees it? Not as we see it, right? We see things and we don't see things the way, the way God does. Um, another example that's in Matthew 11. And granted, this is talking about cities, not people. But in Matthew 11, he it says in verse 20, he began to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. And as an example in verse 23 and 24, he says, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for me. You know, our viewer specifically asked about, as an example of greater sin, is homosexuality a greater sin? Well, when Jesus talks about Sodom, that was the problem with Sodom, but it seems like for Capernaum to have seen the works of Jesus and heard the teaching of Jesus and to ignore and reject them was a greater sin than the sin of Sodom. The problem we run into is other people's sins are always greater than ours, right? We're really good at confessing sin as long as we're confessing the other guy's sin, right? My question would be, have you seen the work of Jesus? Have you heard his teaching? Have you had the, the mercy and grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ presented to you and you reject it? Because if you have... You're guilty of the same thing Capernaum was guilty of. And Jesus said it's going to be better for Sodom in judgment than for them. So um, that's all I got. Thanks for asking. Good thoughts. Good thoughts. All right. Troy McGay hands the anchor, so we're going to end with him. Um, first of all, there's really not much you can add to what the guys have said so far, so I'll go with this a little bit different. Um, are all sins the same? You know, that's been adequately answered. But let me say this. There are consequences to your sin that may be a little different than others. For instance, um, a per person goes out here and they kill somebody. You know, that's the sin of murder. Well, what are the consequences in this life? Well, certainly in this life, if you get found guilty of murder, you go to jail for your lifetime or you're put to death. If you go out of here and you steal something, and listen, sin is sin in the sense of that it's rebellion against God. But understand, there are different consequences, especially in this life. For sin. So understand, you do wrong and understand this, that yes, we are ultimately talking about a responsibility before God, but keep in mind, there is still consequences for sin. And I'll close with this. Let's say a person that is an alcoholic, they have cirrhosis of the liver. The Lord saves them by his grace and mercy. Does that mean that yes, God has forgiven them of their sin? But does that mean that God is obligated to heal them for that sin? No. He can if he wants to, but he doesn't have to. You see, there's still consequences for that sin. So, we need to remember that the things that we've committed in our body, the deeds we've committed today, that we can still yet have to answer for them no matter where our standing is before God. So that's all I have. All right. Mark Campbell wants to have the last word. I just wanted to add something really quick. I've been substitute teaching in school here recently quite a bit, and, and you all will notice this to be the case. There's a lot of young people who think if they say, well, I'm sorry, that it makes it all good. You know, they do something wrong, they break a rule, and they come back and they say, well, I'm sorry. And they think that, well, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all good. And 
all is forgiven and there's no consequences or whatever. And that's just not the case. You can't just say, oh, I'm sorry, and it all be washed away. There are, like Brother Troy said, consequences, and just saying I'm sorry doesn't take away the action. So just thought I'd add that. I don't know why I thought about it, but I thought that might be something to add to the discussion. All right. Todd, now what's the last word? Okay, it was all right. It was just a joke on uh, against Jason, so I'll, I'll let it go. I won't say it again. It was funny, though. It was good. Um, Jason did bring up a point that I forgot about, that the question asker did, did ask us about homosexuality and whether that was worse than other sins. Yeah, I'm not – Jason answered that. Uh, to a degree, I want to read a couple other things. I've often heard it said, well, you know, homosexuality is an abomination. Well, clearly the Bible says that. I'm not going to doubt that. But let me read this passage out of Proverbs. These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Abortion comes to mind, by the way. Uh, a heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Those things are called an abomination too, by the way. We, we have a tendency to forget, and by the way, I, I bet you that every one of us has been guilty of those, some of those, some of those things at least in the past recent history, as far as that goes. Uh, one thing about Sodom, that Jason mentioned in the passage that he was dealing with, you know, when Ezekiel was dealing with Israel's sin, he mentioned Sodom too. And he says, your elder sister, I'm sorry, in verse 48 of, uh, of Ezekiel 16, it says, as I live, says the Lord, neither your sister Sodom nor her daughters have done as you and your daughters have done. And then listen to the sin that he actually Sodom with. You're going to be surprised at this. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. So we're not left to wonder. This was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, abundance of idleness, laziness, we may call it. Uh, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. That's, that's not normally what we think about Sodom. Then he says, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me, therefore I took them away as I saw fit. So it seems to me that the, the selfishness that they had for themselves led them into the abominations that they actually committed. That, that love of self, that was, the, that was the root sin. Same way if you go back, like I mentioned earlier, abortion, the, the, the willingness to murder your own child, that's just self. That's all it is. And most sin can be traced back to that. So, anyway, I just thought I'd add that. Thanks for jogging my memory, Jason. Interesting thoughts, very much. Anybody else got anything they want to add? Jason has the last word. <laughs> Bye. Mark? I didn't get to hear Jason pronounce that word, whatever it was. Mega. Megas. He did good. Megas. It just sounds big, doesn't it? Megas. <laughs> Megas. Sort of like mega. Like yeah. that mega drink. Exactly. Big. Don't you have a mega drink? That's for a that's for a different question that we've been asked about. <laughs> oh, oh, Sonic. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so till next time, we bid you farewell and God bless, and hope it's been instructional. Shalom. Roll Tide.